Yes, he's back again. It must be that Friday feeling. I've counted the days of the week and something is echoing. I don't know what. It could be the boomerang. I don't know, but something's echoing. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, let's get started anyway. Extra footage. Ha <laughs> Yes, yes, we are back, back, back with things making weird echoey noises. I don't know what's going on. How are you all doing? Welcome back. Welcome back. Have you seen that subscriber count? 917. Wow. I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. I really do. I really do. I am blessed. I really am to have so many people join the channel of Dad's RC Hangar. It's fantastic. It's been a journey and it still is a journey. <coughs> it's a long road. <laughs> But we're walking down that road, it's okay, look, even though that, uh, favourite, uh, well, one of my favourite films, Footloose. Yes, bad joke time, it's all good. <laughs> it's going to be done, going to be done, it's that Friday when you feel good and you know that Saturday's going to be a good day tomorrow. It's good for flying in the UK anyway. Around the world, I don't know, um, I know that some states um, are going to be um, wet tomorrow for you guys, so I'm sorry about that. But hey, we can also get building with an echoey fuselage. So, before we do anything, yes, I had a fantastic flight again. This was lesson number four with Paul Heckles and, of course, uh, David Owens following around me in his quad, in the chase quad. Um, once again, um, he came He came at the very last minute. and We had a three-hour lesson, and he got to us for the last 20 minutes, I think. Now, uh, we practiced, uh, he does some figure of eights, um, just as well. Paul has announced me safe. I'm a safe pilot, which is fantastic to hear. It really is, um, which means I could probably fly at some fields at some point, um, as I'm safe. I, should do, I need a badge, you know, like a little bit safe. Hmm. Um, anyway, so <laughs> yes, so uh, David came down and we was doing a lot of landings, uh, takeoffs, landings, takeoff landings. I must have been about 25 or something silly like that. Oh, God knows how many. And of course, the last two that I was doing, David had to film, and they were probably the worst landings ever. It's a funny old wind. I can't blame wind. Um, I can blame myself, but I shouldn't because, you know, it happens. But I, it was one of these things where the clouds are like um, cotton wooly. So you get uh, pockets of air all over the place and it uh, gets you when you're not expected. But that's all about being a great pilot is learning how to handle those. I didn't crash his plane, which was a good thing. It's just that it wasn't the silky smooth landings that I had a few of. I'm not saying I had 25 of them. I did not. Um, but some of them are pretty good, um, and uh, some a big Cheshire smile, Cheshire cat smile, no, Cheshire, no, no, smile like a Cheshire cat, you know what I mean, anyway, so without further ado, let's look at some footage, <laughs> I love my little foot, bless his heart, let's look at some footage, it's only a few minutes, so a bit of funky music, um, and even Paul Heckles at the end was flying David's quad, um, which is the last bit of bit of footage that you see. So he's a very talented man. I don't think he's flown quads for many, many years. So to fly uh, uh, one of David's top quads, which they are top business and uh, the DJI goggles, he was very impressed himself. So uh, let's have a look at the footage.
I've got to stand behind the camera because <sighs> Paul Heckles is on a, a secret flying mission that he's not allowed to talk about for the next month. Yes, what is Dad's RC hanger going to do? <sighs> I'm not going to be able to do my weekly flights. It's okay, I not too many tears are falling down my face. But it's okay, come on, we'll find someone. I'm sure someone at the field now won't save. Um, they'll do it. Anyway, is this not going to be, this is, this was meant to be, the boomerang was meant to be ready for the flight, and it wasn't. Um, I wanted to go through this, so we was all hunky-dory, I'd do a flight in this, which make it a lot easier to phone up Keith or David um, from the field, from the club, and say, hey, you know, come buddy box me, or hey, come let me fly, or do whatever. Because <sighs> I'm used to his flying his planes, but, you know, we could still use something like the uh, the Riot or something, whatever it's called, yeah, the Riot V2 or something, but, uh, you know, in the winds, especially this time of year where it comes the end of September, um, it's the winds start picking up and the weather starts changing, but I'm not going to let that down. I'm determined to get ready for my uh, ACE certificate because, you know, next summer I want to, no excuses, you know, we do roll the wheel, spin the wheel, and we put some planes on there, or we might even do a poll now. I'd be to well, if we get a thousand subscribers anyway, I can do community chat, they call it, or something on YouTube, and I can put in there a poll, so then you can choose what you want to see me fly. Anyway, so as you can see, I've got the engine on, but listen to this, listen to this. Quiet at the back, please. Oh, that sounds like something. I, now, Paul said to me, don't worry about that, Chris, because I was a bit worried about that. And I did show him it and think, what's going on there? Now, this particular engine doesn't have a piston ring. Um, it has like um, um, an inner sleeve that's made of a special metal. He did tell me, and yes, of course, I forgot. Um, it's made of a special metal that expands um, and acts like a, a, a ring, really. Um, uh, but he said, yeah, I mean, the first time you fire this up a bit, it's going to sound like a bag and bag of nails, uh, but then should be fine. So, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll believe him. But doesn't that sound horrible? But, you know, hey-ho. But anyway, so what have we done? So I, I think the best thing I can do is um, if we go to um, the overhead cam, and I can show you a few bits of what we've been working on the boomerang. Uh, as I say, we're not going to be building it today. This is not a build. I'm not been videoing the build of the boomerang, um, just because I wanted to get it done ASAP and not worry about videoing and everything else. Um, so she will be built probably over the weekend, finishing off. Um, I'm waiting for some few bits and pieces, um, including XT30s, which go into the FR Sky R9 as a power supply and backup power supply, um, which we'll show you in a minute. But yeah, so we're just a bit of a chit chat, really. So let's go to the iPhone cam. Welcome to the iPhone cam. Yes, the iPhone cam for overhead shotage. So what we've we got apart from the dog barking, well, as I say, we've got the fuel tank in. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to change in here. Oh my God, the dog's going mad. There's a couple of things I want to change in here is the, if you can see that the linkage that um, goes for the, uh, the, the front wheel, um, it's, it's kind of, it goes through a hole and then comes out. It's all pre-made holes and then through there and comes up and comes up to there. And I don't like the way it's, it's, it's very thin. And I don't like it, so we're, we're going to have a look at that anyway. So here you've got the servo for the uh, throttle. Once again, it goes up through that hole there, and it keeps going up through that hole there, and then goes into a pre-made hole up there. And then I've just done like where well, you can't see, but there's a little bend dodge under there um, that you can just about see. Um, yeah, so I don't like the way they've done that, so I might need to faff about and do that. Um, I've just stuck a bit of timber here just to stop that rolling back, but we're going to have a bit of foam in here and everything else. There we've got our switch to make sure, let's get that back in focus. There we've got a switch to make sure everything turns off nicely. Um, and yeah, so let me show, I've got a servo saver here now. Um, let me just go and power things on, uh, because <laughs> I did forget to power things on. And uh, I will show you what that does. Alrighty, so here we go. So uh, uh, one of the... Um, one of my subscribers, Dudders, um, Stephen, I think his actual name is, but he goes by Does, explained to me this and was very kind enough to send me some pictures of what he's done. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this here is a, it's called a servo saver. 
and this goes to the front. Uh, you can hear that echo, isn't it? It's where I'm talking into the fuselage. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is where it goes into the nose wheel and also the rudder. So this one here would be the rudder. You see the size of the rudder to what they've done the nose wheel. These are supplied linkage, uh, supplied rods. So that the one that's so small and bendy when that one's a lot more tougher. But so you can see what it does is because the last thing you want to do is have the front nose gear um, uh, turn too fast. While this is going on, look here's here's a bit of footage that I've done earlier of the actual nose gear turning. So there you go. See that's what that's the maximum amount that it's turning, which that's all you want. So if you go back to the survey, you can see that the 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 uh, the rudder's getting full full left and full right if you like to call it uh, and obviously I put these into I mean Paul told me about this about the third hole uh, because uh, the, if it's if this was rated at 10 kilograms then two, 10 kilograms would be at the nearest hole so you know he was saying like you know it's always put it's best to put in the middle of the of the inkages especially for something like elevators and uh, and, uh, and um, rudders and stuff that are taking a lot of like forces from the uh, from going up and bits and pieces. I'm all worse today. Um, one per I mean, Dudders was saying about the uh, not putting, not liking these sort of things because obviously they can come loose. And to make a little sort of like mark inside so it's more like a square, you know, just uh, use a router and then put them in so it doesn't move, which is a great idea. I like these personally because uh, they let you give you a bit more, uh, how to say, a bit more precision in lining up the um, ailerons and elevators uh, because obviously you know anything else you're doing turns um, on the clevis this way it might be a literally a fraction um, of, of what you need and uh, yeah and that's why I like these because you can do that but yeah so you can see back at the rudder here as I say there's not a lot going on but the floor and that's going in there which would be a nice full thing I did check now on the on the uh, wing uh, I did change the uh, the elevators. Uh, sorry, what am I talking about? <laughs> my mind's going. I did change the clevises. Anyway, this is enough of that. Let's do my ending game. <laughs> so there you have it. So uh, you know, this is how far I've got with the boomerang. Um, it's had its challenges. Um, it's not um, it's not the nicest of builds, but I enjoy that. So, you know, to get things to get things going. I mean, what I couldn't show you on the wing as well is I picked up the wing the other day and kind of like the the leading edge, it's almost like it cracked or something. So I don't know what's going on under there. Um, and it, you know, I didn't pick it up, so here's a wing. It was more like just pick it up, and so I don't know. Um, we shall see. <laughs> With a squeaky engine and some and a dodgy sub. I don't know if I'm gonna use that servo saver. I mean, basically the servo saver is for shock of the wheel, so you don't end up killing the servo. Um, I mean, I'm almost thinking, um, just because the, the wheels, I'm going to change the rod because the wheel, when you go, when the servo goes back to centre, it doesn't always centre itself. Um, I could try sort of pushing the springs on a bit so it's more sprung, but you don't want to go too tight, otherwise you don't have any movement. But I think it's just where, where I was showing you, it was hard to see on, on the, on the programme. My glasses are filthy. It was hard to see on the, on the video. But you know, it's sort of like, you know, you're going from the wheel, uh, uh, the nose wheel, and then it's sort of going up. And then up and up and then sort of like down and up. It's it's not, you know, I never understand this on like this sort of bills, the bolsa bills that they're pre-built. Is that why don't they just then just do a nice straight line of where the cable's going? I mean, they must know because they design it. You know, and then you'll have some sort of like Z-bend, uh, Z-bend, because um, um, you shouldn't have like the right angle because obviously it can bend that way. But if you could sort of go along and then have that kind of ramp, like a Z, and then then it's it's going to be solid when you're pushing backwards and forwards. Um, I learned that um, of a, of somebody who I don't know. Um, but to say you know, <coughs> um, thanks Dudders um, for all that information that you gave me. Anyway, I appreciate that. This is what I like about you know sort of doing YouTube. You meet so many people online and so many help, so much help out there. And this is a part of what I want to do with these videos is try and help. Um, now you're still saying, or some of you saying, well, I, I watched this because it was like how to fly series, my journey. What it is, I'm just getting into it because uh, that, you know, I've decided that this is where we're going to be putting lots of stuff that I've learned about batteries, about battery testers, about battery charging, about fuel and everything else. There's lots and lots and lots of stuff. Now you did notice that um, also on the engineering, you may notice that I haven't got a fuel filter 
on this engine. Now this is once again with chat with Paul Heckles, which is a uh, he's a man of much knowledge. Um, and basically, he's got about four filters on his um, fuel pump, and the way it goes around the pipe and everything else. And he says, you know, the caps, uh, you know, the, the, the fillers never out for more than a couple of seconds. It's not left around to get dirt and everything else. Is it is like a, a fuel pump or a few fuel, fuel filter is another point of failure on your engine, uh, which I totally understand. You know, it's like anything. You know, the more connections you have, even. If you sort of wiring loom, you know, the more connections you have, the more points of failure there is. Um, and if you've got like, you know, I mean, you know, from a, a few hundred to a few thousand pounds worth of plane, you, you, you don't want to crash just because of a point of failure. Um, you want to crash because you, you crashed it because you're crap. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? You know, it's nothing worse than saying, oh my golly gosh, you know, it crashed because of that pipe or that, uh, you know, or, or the fuel filter, how sickening would that be? But this is what it's all prepper is all about, you know, getting the plane there and checking all these things, checking the linkages, checking the pipes, checking everything before you fly. If you want a, a better chance of taking your plane home, then you check, you do your pre-flight checks, just like you do in any other plane. If you see like, you know, uh, war movies or whatever else, you know, uh, uh, war birds and stuff, what they're doing, they're walking around the plane and they're checking everything, even today, you know, sort of all the big, big, sexy planes you know that are out there you see them they're checking they're checking the rockets make sure they're not falling off god knows what would happen if they went like that and it fell off kaboom <laughs> don't know about that whether it needs engaging or what but anyway they're checking they're checking all their surfaces and everything else checking make sure all the hatches are, are not loose and all this sort of thing and it's exactly what you need to do you are a pilot at the end of the day and you're about to pilot your plane so you need to check it so big thing that is and i do with all my bits and pieces of flights and that includes the CG as well and that includes especially with CA hinges I mean it's only CA glue I mean it could with the Sun or whatever come loose you know I've seen a video um, and I've forgotten his name now lovely plane it was and uh, the CA hinges on the elevator come off and they'd like to similar to the boomerang had four four CA hinges whether they were glued or not I don't know but they look like they just come out um, and because of the elevators gone crash lots of money down the drain lots of hard-earned cash and time so always check these and uh, and basically Paul Herkel's drum it's not just about flying with Paul it's about everything and he's making me a better pilot um, off the air or not in the air and on the ground if that makes sense um, and making me realize a lot of stuff anyway going back stop rabbiting on that's the servo saver I don't know if I'm gonna I'm not happy about that wheel where it doesn't go back straight I'm going to try another rod. I'm going to make another path for the rod, and I'm going to got another steel rod, and I'm going to do all this um, sort of during the week and over the weekend, which means we'll be back on the Spitfire next week. Oh yes, the Spitfire, bless our heart, has been sitting here with a guts hanging out everywhere, and I've got bits and pieces to stick in there, and we've not done it. I feel sorry for her, bless her heart. So we're going to get back on the Spitfire and get her finished next week because I've got my rod tubes and my rods and everything else that I need. So there is no uh, there is no excuse to get that ready, and that be ready for a maiden. So when we are back with Paul Heckles, oh, hang on, tears coming again. No, I'm all right. When we are back with Paul Heckles, hopefully in uh, sort of beginning of November, we'll get some nice days, cold, crispy days, maybe with oh, much wind or whatever. Um, he we will get the Spitfire out. He says he's going to fly it for us for the first time. See how she goes. See if there's any issues, um, any trimmings that need to be done that I might not notice. And, uh, and then I'll be flying her, which would be kind of the maiden for me, put it that way. Um, but I'd rather Paul and his expertise tell me that the plane ship shape. But that's a ship, isn't it? Ship shape. Hmm. The plane is airworthy. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, so this is another quick video. Not really interesting. Um, if you enjoyed my flight and enjoyed my crazy silly landings that you just about saw, then great stuff. Um, obviously, you enjoyed the footage of david's quad work which is uh, fantastic he's a is a great quad pilot and just uh, basically um what i'm doing really so listen listen before you all go to sleep and wake up come on wake up wake up um have a great weekend if you do get out flying then it's brilliant and um, i'm sure if you've got a youtube channel i will see it on youtube channel i follow millions of people i try and watch at least one of your movies a lot of people bring about 10 movies 
and I can't watch them all obviously you know otherwise it'd be my full-time job of watching YouTube movies if you haven't subscribed please just take a second right now and subscribe for me and press the like press the like just take two seconds just come out of whatever just press it press it come back to me because uh, it means the world to me and if you want to see my videos press the bell button for notifications and when you press the bell push all so every movie every whatever you'll get a ding dong from that's what a lot of people just press the bell and don't realize that you press the bell and there's a secondary option to say bell all so you receive all notifications because there's some people brian included um sir how you doing and uh, he said he missed my movie one of my movies um with flying in it but see, there you go press the all button um, but yeah so if you get out flying get out there if not then start thinking about the winter time and what you're going to build ready for next year um, i've got a build uh, well i've got lots of builds including the mig 29 but um you never know that might be next i've got the tortuga that i really want to get ready and fixed so i would think after the spitfire the tortuga will be the plane i have got a build that's a balsa full balsa an old old plane that i will probably build and then we'll probably do something like a speed build or something because otherwise that'd be taking forever um but of course that comes with time and time is something unfortunately i don't have much of um it's always against me this is why these these friday feelings are special to me uh, as well mainly um because it's uh it just means that you know i can get out and fly which i did and in the future i'll be able to get out and fly tomorrow and the next day enjoy myself of course you know keeping the wife in the brownie points because otherwise then i you know be all daggers when i come back from flying <laughs> anyway thanks for popping by i really appreciate it keep safe be safe and enjoy yourself thanks see you now bye bye